That'd be cool. Um, what's can it called? Your face. <laughs> yeah, James, can you please back up? <laughs> what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another Mike Up Mike and Jack interview. This is interview number three, and today we have a very special guest. You might know her from TikTok. You might know her from uh, her blog. You might know her from whatever. Sophia Vug. Let's welcome Sophia Vug to the to the show. Welcome, Sophia. So, Sophia, what's going on, bro? How's everything doing? Um, I'm chilling. Uh, how are you guys? Good, good. I'm great. I'm great. <laughs> I'm gonna really love this interview. I cannot believe I'm interviewing my little cousin. Uh, how's school going for you guys? How's what your? Is it? <laughs> are you interviewing us? What no, I'm you? just asking. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, Sophia, can you tell us about your upbringing? <laughs> what does what, that what even mean? <laughs> this is why. This is why. Oh, I, it was like birth. <laughs> <laughs> Please, James. This is why I tell you prepare the questions before we go do an interview. Uh, so, uh, Sophia, um, I know that you are really good at gymnastics. What made you get into uh, gymnastics? Um, nothing particularly. My mom, my parents, kind of like. Well, I started at a really young age. I started at two. It was mostly my parents' idea. But after I was training for about 12 years, and then my last three years, I switched my team because it got really, not like bad, but like we lost our gym. Like it wasn't like really good um, hygiene. Like, I guess you would say, like, hygiene. Like, the gym wasn't as great. Like, very dirty. Like, bad neighborhood. So, we moved. So, I went to this gym called Matchpoint. And I, like, right away, like, fell in love. It was, like, my favorite place. Like, the coaches were good. The the girls were good. So, then I started doing gymnastics there. And then this year, because of COVID and my back injuries, I had to quit. So, now I just work out in the gym and yeah that's nice do you have any memorable moments throughout your 12 years of doing gymnastics yeah i have a lot of memorable moments mostly they're like competitions like my favorite part was like traveling and like staying in hotel rooms with like my friends and just like eating a bunch of snacks and hiding them from our coaches i also got to travel to puerto rico once where i was like on the cover of their magazine with one of my gymnastics posts of Puerto Rico's magazine? Yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool. I, mean, I actually didn't know this. Well, and I know everything about this girl. That's kind of that's kind of creepy. Yeah. <laughs> Recently, actually, um, you gained some following on social media. So, uh, can I ask you a question? How how did that all come about? Like, what made you get into TikTok? Like. What well, you know, what was the motivation, all that stuff? Oh, a week before Corona, I download oh the coronavirus pandemic, sorry. <laughs> a week, <laughs> so a week before that, I downloaded this app, like as a joke, just like you know, just posting, dancing to like videos, lip singing, not like a big deal or anything. And then during during like this pandemic it was just like a known like I just did it every day because I was just simply bored and a lot of people like downloaded and did it like basically because they were bored until I found a way to like promote certain things on my TikTok and that was like a cool way because I got to download it's called the TikTok creator fund I could get like new promotions for like different of my videos so I didn't like know about that. I just had it for like a little bit because none of my videos ever like blew up until recently, actually, I posted a gymnastics video of me doing a routine and like the thoughts in my head while doing it. And I just posted it as a joke and it like kind of blew up. It got like about like 10 million views on it. So after that, like my whole, like I gained a bunch of followers after that. I got a bunch of like different promotions after that. So that was pretty cool. So how many followers do you have now? 101.4 thousand followers. Wow. That's insane. And and from that video, you gained how many followers? Like you gained? I, I gained about 3,000. 
How much? 40,000? 40,000. <laughs> but the thing with it, it's like, it's so random. Like some people can post literally like two seconds of a video and it can get so mm. many views versus someone could spend hours on like a video for it, it to get only two views. So it's all about, it's called like the TikTok algorithm. So it's like this algorithm where it's like you post certain stuff at certain times at like certain days. And what I guess like I kind of like met that slogan. So I blew up a lot. So like in terms of that, actually, like in terms of like, no, now that you, you kind of understand that algorithm, I guess, mm -hmm. and like, you know, what to post, when to post all that stuff. What, what kind of recommendations would you have for people who are trying to, you know, be successful on TikTok, just like you? Like just, just like you know just some general outline i would say find what sticks to you like find something that you like and start posting about it because i tried to post other things that i saw from other people where there was like a day in my life for like how to study and this and that because there's like different things there's like it's called like study talk or like fitness talk or like whatever so it's like some accounts post of like my bad sophia but yo Check out what's going on with me and Jock. We pass a water bottle to each other. Crazy stuff. Their new, like, pencils and how they, like, draw with them and this and that. And someone posts, like, music talk and, like, or whatever. So I kind of just, like, ever since I posted that video, I just kept posting more of my routines and, like, the thoughts in my head while doing it. And all those videos blew up. Mm -hmm. So you basically are saying that, like, it's better to find, like, a certain, like, a specific <laughs> niche in the, yeah. in the TikTok realm. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. That does make a lot of sense. So to everybody who's trying to get famous on TikTok, don't don't be making like a bunch of random dance videos because yeah. nobody's gonna follow you. <laughs> <laughs> After you got all this um, TikTok, you know, fame and all that stuff, what do you plan on doing with it other than just posting videos? Because I I know that you've been trying to get, like you were talking about the creator fund and getting some deals. So like, what kind of like what do you plan on doing with TikTok and how do you plan on using your platform, uh, in any aspect like? whatever so you think i actually created a blog it's called the vuglog.com and i have an instagram for it called the vug blog and with that i'm going to use my a lot of the tiktok followers that i gain and a lot of like other followers like instagram and like other stuff like that to promote this blog and in this blog i post a bunch of articles or like whatever like everyday posts that i would just do for just anyone to read about it so like my most my first ever blog that I ever posted was about rhythmic gymnastics and like the dark truth behind it that people don't get to see and I used my TikTok to also promote it like I have the link in my bio of my TikTok so if someone finds me and they see my bio like they'll click the link and it takes you straight to my website mm, okay. also on my personal Instagram account my uh my link and my instagram are also in the bio so that's how i'm using like my social media to promote this blog in which i just talk about like anything i could possibly want and other people can also post on it you could also send me an article and i will post it with like obviously the proper like credentials mm, okay okay that's pretty cool that you know you're using it to promote your own brand that's really smart that's something i always wanted to do actually so good for you like actually that's really good um, but other, other than that, like other than the blog, are you planning on doing anything with it? Like, for example, I know that a lot of, you know, like prominent TikTokers or like, you know, influencers on in social media in general, they like to um, like, you know, sign brand deals or like, you know, promote stuff or something like that. Do you plan on do, like if the opportunity arises, would you do something like that or have you done yeah, something like that? I, would. I had a brand um, hit me up in my instagram dm and they were asked they were looking for like new amb brand ambassadors to like promote their stuff and the company's called Vel Valentra, and they sent me like i got to pick out like three necklaces or like three jewelry items of my choice and i picked them out like i picked out like three necklaces and they sent it to me so i'm considered a brand ambassador for them now so that was one deal that i got from tiktok but huge ones no not really so, but like, if there was a huge one, would you? Yeah, for sure. I would, I think that's so cool. Yeah, for sure. I agree with you. That's the dream, literally just, you know, dancing on TikTok and just like showing like necklaces for like a million dollars. Exactly. So let's say, for example, your, you know, TikTok career, it's obviously, you know, on the rise now, but let's say it continues to grow and it blows up and all that stuff. 
and obviously you're still a, a high school student, but in the future, if, if, you know, your social media presence takes off and it's making you a really good, you know, income and whatever, would you ever consider not going to college or is that something that's in your future? Um, growing up, college was always in the back of my head and my parents like made it clear that, um, that they do want me to have like finished school and like get a degree and everything. So I'm not sure a hundred percent. I think it's cool when I see like entrepreneurs like coming out, not having finished like college or sometimes even high school and them making uh, lots of money and being very like su successful. But like personally, I don't think it's for me because I want to like I want to finish college and I want to get like a diploma or like a degree because I don't know it just would mean like a lot more to me because it's also it would it would not mean for myself but it would also be really important for my family mm -hmm. and I like take that like very seriously like I take my family like to heart so yeah, for sure so whatever makes them happy makes me happy so yeah so but what if what if you you know, you got a really prominent following on, on, you know, TikTok or whatever it is. And, you know, it's, it's being stable and you finish your college degree. Would you still go and go and like, get a, get a normal job? I'm sorry if I'm thinking like, you know, s s no, eight, no, eight no, years no. ahead, but just like, this is just interesting. Like, I just want to hear from you. Like, what would you do if, if, you know, you have a very big following and um, you're making a stable income, but you have the degree, would you go get a job or would you just continue with the social media thing? I think I would still go get a job because TikTok, in my opinion, I don't think will last forever and mm -hmm. any social media platform for that matter will last forever. So I think just TikTok right now is just like a trendy thing going on and it eventually will like will die off. But so I wouldn't 100% like rely on that. I would obviously want like another job on the side just to make sure if anything goes bad, I have like a backup plan. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's that's a completely valid reason i agree with you so good for you <laughs> thanks mike <laughs> <laughs> all right jack take it away what you got what you got for, for uh, so i have a few questions for sophia so um my first question for sophia since we left off uh, uh career wise is what would you like what would you like to do as far as your career i'm not a hundred percent sure yet because I want to go into medical. I want to go into the medical field, but I actually want to be a psychiatrist. Me too. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Okay. I, yeah. I'll just talk to both of you later on separately about psychiatry. I don't know. I'm in, I'm in psychology right now and it's like really cool and I'm like really interested in it, but I'm also not entirely sure because I, yeah, I'm just not sure about even like what college I want to go to. So I still have to like got a lot of figuring out to do. How's your experience been during this pandemic? Um, I kind of in terms it. of school. Oh, in the beginning, it was really hard. Like in the very, very, very beginning when I got even like used to Zoom. And it was just it was just very difficult because nothing was really planned out ahead. Um, Like this pandemic like hit very like boom in your face and then like that's it like you you guys can't go back to school so it got like really confusing like I remember doing like my chemistry lectures at like three o'clock in the morning because that was the only time I had to get like all that work done so but for now I kind of like stabilized it um and I don't really I'm not really a lazy person so I, I do pay attention in like my classes that I have even on zoom or whatever because I know some like people don't but I feel like it's important, especially right now, because once, let's say we do get back to school, it's going to be really difficult getting like caught back up like a whole year. So it's been, it's been difficult, but like I like maintained it. Would you prefer uh, to physically go to school or do it through online now that you've experienced both? It's there's like a lot of pros and cons to it. Like some of the pros about online school is like, let's say I like, I wake up and I could just do my classes in my bed and I wake up and I don't have to wake up as early to travel to school. Like I remember sitting in the car, like six o'clock in the morning, sleeping 
because it was it was like really hard for me to get because I live far from my school so for me to be in classes at 8 a.m I would only have to leave my house at six so just not getting enough sleep was like really like tiring for me so that's one good thing about online school a bad thing is that let's say I have an issue or like a connection issue it's obviously very difficult for me to join my classes because like I have no internet and if I have like a question I can't like run to my teacher's like classroom and really and like ask it and get the answer right away versus I would have to like email them wait for like a zoom meeting like what if they don't answer yeah since since you experience both um, large amount of classes or or now in private school a small amount of classes, would this affect you when you're applying to colleges? Would you prefer public universities, private universities? How would you prefer the senior recess now that you've experienced both classroom settings? Would you want it to be small or you want it to be large? Um, I would, in my opinion, I would want to be for it to be large because I would just want to see like the different things I could take, like different classes, different people to meet different teachers versus when you're in a smaller setting, you're kind of limited to like choices you like. What, but like some private colleges, they do, there are some like large private colleges like Cornell, which you can take. Um, there's like a lot of choices for you, different classes, different like careers that you can pick. So I wouldn't say there's like much of a difference versus a pri from private versus a public university, in my opinion, because I don't know, I feel like both are equally like as good and a has um, and both equally have like a lot of classes and a lot of like teachers and different like careers you could pick. So it doesn't matter to me, I guess. Okay, since you're interested in studying medicine, are you in, are you looking into like any kind of like shadowing right now or volunteering or anything um, that I gets am. you a little uh, feet wet in the field? I am. <laughs> what? <laughs> um, I tried, but it's really hard because not a lot of people are doing volunteer work right now because of Corona. So. Um, I'm still trying, like I'm still joining like some um, like Zoom webinars about it, but it's obviously not the same from like seeing it in person and like hands on. So that's like unfortunate, but hopefully next year when I'm a senior, um, there are going to be some opportunities for me to do it. But as of now, I can't really right now. No, no. If, you, if you had one word to describe James, what would it be? Annoying. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right all right anyways guys thank you so much for coming back to another interview with mike up mike and jack sophia thank you so much for joining us um your, your position that you're in right now is great uh, we had we had a long break be between this <laughs> but yeah make sure to tune in to the next video like subscribe comment share if you're bored and all that stuff sophia any final words uh thanks for having me <laughs> All right, we'll see you guys in the next one.